Hi everyone, today we're going to use Seek's Workbench software to do predictive maintenance on a reverse osmosis membrane. The goal is to preemptively replace the RO membrane within the predictive maintenance range before estimating material failure. The defining characteristic for the RO membrane failure is upward or downward trending of normalized flow, the variable you see here, of which we have six months worth of data from January 1st to about June or July. Normalized flow is normally computed via first principles calculation from several variables including input and output pressure, connectivity, etc. Generally, an upward trend in normalized flow signals RO membrane breakage, whereas a downward trend signals RO membrane fouling. In this case, we're going to assume we have membrane fouling and we're going to assume a linear model between our normalized flow and the number of days this membrane has been in service. So to start, we have to compute the days in service. So we'll go to formula. We'll name this days in service. And our formula is going to be time since to time. So we're going to put a static day here, 2018, January 1st, at midnight. And we're going to increment by a day. And there we have it in purple, number of days in service. So now we want to predict our normalized flow, extrapolate it outwards. So we'll come down here to prediction. We'll call this predicted normalized flow. The signal to model is our normalized flow. Input signals is our days of service. We're going to assume our linear model again. And there we have it. And we see it is indeed trending downward. So we'll go ahead and execute that. It doesn't do much much good if it's as in its own plot. So what we'll do is we'll come down here to customize and we'll change the lane this is in to one. So we want to overlay the predicted normalized flow on top of the normalized flow. So we'll change this to lane one. And then we need to change the axes to A. And there you have it. We have predicted normalized flow overlaid on top of normalized flow. We can extrapolate this outward and take a look at what this looks like. I didn't mean to do that. Come out here to about 2021, and there you have it. So we have our green line trending downwards as expected. So in order to compute a predictive maintenance range, we need an upper and a lower threshold. So we'll make those. We'll come down here to the formula tool again. We'll call this the upper maintenance threshold and our, our formula will be two signal let's say 60 for now execute that so we have our upper maintenance threshold we'll make a lower maintenance threshold and we'll say two signal 55 Normalized flow of 55, we go lower threshold. Execute that. Again, these don't do us much good if they're in their own plots, so we'll line them up as well. And we have to make the axes the same. And there we have it. So you see when this green line crosses the orange and the blue line, it's where we have our maintenance range. So we can actually compute that out. Like if we go to value search, we'll call this the maintenance range. The signal we want is predicted normalized flow, the green line. Entry criteria and exit criteria is when, whenever our predicted normalized flow is between 60 and 55, and our maximum capsule duration, since it's gonna be multiple weeks or even months, we'll do 300 days. So we'll execute that, and there we have it. Our predicted maintenance capsule is shown here in blue. And you see the start of it occurs when our predictive normalized flow crosses the upper threshold, and it ends when our predicted normalized flow crosses the lower threshold. You can also see our predicted maintenance capsule occurs around July 2019 to October 2019, meaning that we should preemptively replace the RO membranes around this time frame before the normalized flow drops below threshold levels. This way, planned maintenance and replacing the fouled RO membrane can prevent unplanned downtime, which can be costly in terms of time and money.